Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review, and it is a full review of an emoage from the Library Collection, which if you've been following my channel, you basically know that I've gone through one, two, three, four, and five. So now, go figure, we're on number six. And uh, the Library Collection, number Opus 6, if you will, uh, and Opus 6 is a fragrance that is, according to the blurb, amber, leather, and woody fragrance that is inspired by the destruction and reinvention of knowledge and memories, which is a hell of a thing to list a fragrance uh, or base a fragrance off of. I'll read you the um, little blurb on uh, Fragrantica. There's a little bit of a different blurb from the little... Uh, excuse me, there's a little uh, card that comes with these that, you know, have the blurb that I read on. And then there is a blurb on uh, Fragrantica that says this. It says that Opus 6, presented as a romantic fragrance, creating its own vivid memories, is a woody amber oriental. Inspired by the traditional medicine for broken hearts. The traditional medicine for broken hearts. Interestingly, if you look at the box... And you look at each one of these little circles right here. I don't know about you, but uh, this kind of looks like a heart in the middle with a sun. Um, so I'm not sure what the traditional medicine for broken hearts is. But um, apparently Christopher Chong is saying that this is it. If you have your heart broken, spray some of this shit. Um, so... Whereas the traditional ambers created through balsamic raw materials, creative director Christopher Chong approaches this most traditional concept through a modern lens, fusing synthetic molecules with a decidedly modern olfactory profile, such as ambronum and Z11. This supposedly helps create a discordant effect, which is not unlike the emotional frame of when someone tries to forget the memories of a heartache. According to Christopher Chong, Personal memories are a fragmented journey into our lives, a source of profound knowledge, a sort of secret diary into the minds of each of us. I do think it's interesting that he is um, going back to this idea of sort of memories uh, in each of our minds because that is a lot of how he ended up creating Amouage's fragrances over the reign as, as creative director that he had. He um, really went back to personal memories and feelings with things like Imitation Man, which is right, oh, which is right here, um, where it's supposed to be like his memory, his childhood of being in New York City in the 70s, stuff like that, you know. Um, and, and so it's interesting that he's kind of going back to this idea of memories. Uh, well, or I should say early on he was using that idea and then used it again and again because Imitation Man, I think, came out in 2018 or so. Uh, and this came out in 2012. So this is early on in his reign. Now, if you go to Parfumo, if you go to Fragrantica, you'll notice there are no perfumers listed. But I saw an interview on uh, that Amouage actually posted, a more recent interview, but it was Alberto Mordias, and he was talking about the creation of Opus 6. And he was saying that he worked with Pia Negrin on this fragrance. If memory serves, okay? I couldn't find the video again for some reason. Well, I, I just did a cursory search, but I didn't spend too much time doing it. Um, but I, I will say that they worked together again to create Opus 7. So I wouldn't be surprised if they worked on Opus 6. Now, one thing I should mention is Opus 6 is probably one of my personal favorites from the whole Opus collection, okay? So during that interview, Alberto Moria said something that stuck with me. And I hope this is the right fragrance he said it for, but it makes sense if it is. He says, they wanted to create a, an oud-like fragrance without using any oud. In this case, they wanted to create like a amber oriental fragrance without using any of the traditional style of just making a generic amber. They wanted to use ingredients that were more modern to give that, as the, as the uh, write-up said, this sort of effect. Um which this discordant effect, okay? So they so to do that, Christopher Chong used these stranger ingredients, which you don't always smell. So there's something slightly, um, uh, I would say, you know, something slightly um, personable about this scent. There's something that is familiar. There's something that reminds you of maybe a past memory, but it's almost like seen through a fish lens. It's a little bit strange. You know, it's not necessarily... Um, exactly uh, clear, let's say. You kind of get bits and pieces of the memory, but as the write-up says, it is discordant, okay? So that's kind of the idea. And so what's interesting is when you first spray, instantly you're gonna notice something very green. 
uh, that hits you. The greenest parts of the fragrance are in the opening to me, and that's because in the top you're hit with this bay leaf or laurel note, okay? And it's kind of a vibrant combo of uh, frankincense and pepper. Now, there is a debate on the online community and also between the fragrance, um, the fragrance databases, if you will, Fragrantica says that the pepper note in here is Sichuan pepper. Um, Parfumo says that the pepper note in here is black pepper. So instantly you have a, a clash. I don't know which one is correct. Uh, I will tell you that if you told me there's black pepper in here, I'd probably go, yeah, there's black pepper in here. And if you told me there's Sichuan pepper in here, guess what? I'd probably go, yep, there's Sichuan pepper in here. Um, but it definitely um, gives off this vibrant... Uh, energetic, peppery opening with this frankincense. And the frankincense is like a blend of a little bit of smoky frankincense, which comes later. I feel like the frankincense becomes smokier as the hours tick by. Um, and maybe that smokiness is coming also from the labdanum in the base, the gum rock rose, if you will. But uh, it definitely feels like there's a smoky element that begins to appear as the hours tick by. And early on, the frankincense can seem slightly lemony and fresh. So it really feels like a fresh frankincense tear pulled off of the tree. Um, so this fragrance, many times of the newer amouages, you'll hear me say, this is not an amouage, right? Uh, this fragrance checks the box. Is this an amouage? Yes, absolutely. This is an amouage to me. Uh, this is the, the kind of fragrances that I like to see amouage making personally, okay? Uh, but what's interesting is early on, there's this syrupy, thick jelly-like feel to the... It's a very... Uh, Sort of, um, have you ever seen that jelly that they shoot bullets into uh, and to see how much, how fast the bullet's going and all that stuff? Uh, imagine this very thick jelly, you know, there's this, um, there's this, there's really no other way to say it, but it's almost like the frankincense and, and the peppery notes in the top and the, and the green laurel are like swimming in this very thick uh, viscous jelly-like uh, feel. It's like a, like a gummy oriental, okay? And the patchouli in here, contrary to what some other people who have reviewed this fragrance say, I think if you really focus on this patchouli, I think that the patchouli does give a little bit of a vintage feel, just a little bit, okay? I'm not saying this is Givenchy Gentleman or Beverly or Giorgio Beverly Hills for Men or anything like that, but there is a little bit of a vintage patchouli feel here, okay? Um, and just the way that it's used, okay? There's a slight vintage masculine feel. If you really focus, you'll get it. And I definitely get it with the patchouli. Um, but again, early on, that jelly note is slightly sweet. And I think they really did that on purpose. I don't think there's anything that's done by mistake or accident with these houses, especially these expensive niche houses. They're paying attention to every little detail. Um, and the execution here, because of the slight sweetness in the opening, it really feels like they're trying to appeal to, you know, a larger group of people, like a westernized audience, right? And if the blurb that Alberto Mordias mentioned, making an oud-like smell without using any oud type of ingredients, um, uh, you know, it, it makes sense that they're trying to appeal to this western audience. And in 2012, oud was the thing. So it does make perfect sense if that's the case. Because, you know, anyone who was anyone in 2012 had an oud fragrance. Creed released their oud fragrance the year before. You know, um, just go down the list. MFK put out their oud fragrance in early around this time as well. And of course, Amouage has had their oud in, in fragrances even before this, with Jubilation 25 had oud in it. Um, and so, to make this style of perfume in 2012 makes perfect sense. But I like the artistic aspect that Christopher Chong sort of approached this from, if that makes sense. That really does speak to me. I like the execution, the niche feel, feels very modern, the ingredients smell very high quality, exactly what you would expect from an Amouage. This is the type of fragrance that made me fall in love with Amouage, stuff like this. Um, and so instantly you're going to notice though, along with everything that I've said, there are some very strange and exotic notes that sort of come to the forefront with Opus 6, okay? Uh, and probably the one that's going to get the most talk is a note called Silk Vine, which can also be known as Milk Broom, and it's also known as Paraploca. Paraploca. I'm going to say Paraploca. I don't know how to pronounce it. But um, apparently it's an extremely unique note. In Parfumo, there's a really cool feature. If you click on the note, it'll tell you all the fragrances that have that note in it. 
And uh, in Parfumo's database, under Silk Vine, there's only three. Opus 6, uh, a fragrance from Providence Perfume called Vienne Chain, which I've never smelled, and a fragrance from Slumber House, which I've never smelled, called Lons. So that's it. Three fragrances from the whole database that have this Silk Vine note. And apparently, some folks say Silk Vine has like this milky, vegetal-like smell, which is interesting. Maybe that's where a little bit of that green greenery comes from. Others say it has a gourmand-like aspect from time to time, and maybe there's a little bit of a vanilla, like a vanilla creamy floral, like smell, green floral aspects, which maybe is where that creamy, thick, viscous jelly thing feels like. Um, honestly, I don't know. I can't sit up here and say silk vine smells like this because I have no clue. I've never smelled silk vine, uh, not on its own anyways. There are some ingredients I've been blessed to smell on their own, so I can kind of pick it out a little easier in a composition. Silk vine is one of those, and I'm just like, I don't know. That's just a very exotic and strange note, but I think that stays true to the Amouage DNA of doing something different and unique, uh, but doing it with high quality materials. And um, this, this fits well into this. It's unique without being just strange. You know how sometimes fragrances can come across as strange, like museum pieces. You know, there are some fragrances where people are like, why would I ever want to wear this or smell like this? Yes, it's different. Yes, it's unique. But why in the world would I want to smell like this? This is not one of those fragrances. Um, I actually have worn Opus 6 to work multiple times. And I've gotten some pretty good feedback from my colleagues. Not that I care, uh, but... Um, I, I, I will tell you, if you are one of those people who do care, then, you know, that's an interesting just little side part. So, sort of um, taken in isolation, I really like what the fragrance is doing on my skin as, as the hours tick by. I think that that little sweet bit in the opening, um, that jellied sweetness, if you will, I don't know how to describe it, this oriental jellied sweetness... I think what ends up happening, my my professional prognosis on this, uh, that was a joke. I'm not a professional by any stretch of the imagination, but for my two cents, for whatever it's worth, is I think that the um, fragrance goes from a sweeter feel, a sweeter ambery frankincense feel, to something that almost turns into a little bit of a dry amber. You know, it feels like the fragrance um, loses some of that sweetness as the hours go by. It was never, it's never so sweet in the beginning where it really puts me off. I don't want to give the impression that there, it's just a disgusting sweet bomb, because it's not that at all. Even from first spray, I like this fragrance, okay? But I think I like it better when you take it in isolation, um, that as it dries down, that ambery bit, which is really focused on, on this in this fragrance, becomes drier and drier as the hours tick by, if that makes sense. It turns into a dry amber. Not bone dry, but it does turn drier, okay? Um, and so I think that's why it's important never to judge a fragrance on first sniff. You can never just spray something on and go, yes or no. You know, you really have to let it develop on your skin. You have to see what it does and how it breaks down and how it evolves as the hours tick by and what notes come and go, especially when you're talking about an expensive niche fragrance. Um, now, uh, while I'm thinking about it, something to mention. So this line of fragrances, Amouage is doing weird things with the Opus line, to me, okay? Uh, say what you want about the new guy. Um, I don't like what some of the things that have been happening in Amouage. Uh, that's like maybe the, the most obvious uh, statement you could imagine coming from me. If you've been following my channel, you know I am not a fan with what is going on at Amouage. But if you go to the Amouage website, which I like to do from time to time, the official website, right? Um, mwage.com, if you go click on, uh, search and just search Opus 6, nothing comes up. Nothing. It used to be able to, um, show older, oh, you know, uh, library collection bottles. This is the older presentation, by the way, I should mention. I always give other fragrance houses a hard time for not putting labels on and stuff like that correctly, but, um, this little thing right here doesn't bother me. I know they used to do... Uh, these by hand. They had workers in the factory who would put these on by hand back in the day. So, but it's not on the website at all. Um, there's no Opus 6 on Amouage's website at all, period. When you do a search on the search engine, the Amouage Opus 6 does not come up for Amouage. You, there's a bunch of other stuff that comes up for Opus 6, but nothing on the official Amouage website, 
When you go to collections and click the library collection, it shows King Blue, Royal Tobacco, Wood Symphony. Basically, it shows the ones that got put in the new bottles, okay? So if it was a release like um, Opus 5 I reviewed, but I reviewed it out of the old bottle. They put Opus 5 in the new bottle. That is on the Amouage website. Reckless Leather, because it got put in the new bottle, is on the Amouage website. Uh, Rose Incense, which I still have not done a video on, is on the Amouage website. Silver Oud, which I have done a video on, is on the Amouage website. And the collection sampler sets are there. But the sampler sets only include the ones that I mentioned. They don't include any of these older ones. So even though Parfumo says it's still in production, and it's being marketed by Sabco Oman Perfumery or whatever it is, um, I don't see it on the website at all. So I don't know if it's still in production. I don't know if it is um, discontinued or, or what's going on. Or I know Amwash has a new website. I don't know if they've just not put it up yet or... But someone once told me something about searching, and I'd searched and I found it before. Now I can't search and find them at all. Like, they've taken them down. So I don't know if they've just sent all the old stock, the old bottles, to discounters. And they're like, we're going with these new bottles and that's that. Or I don't know what's going on on that front. So just a little veer off course a little bit here, okay? But, um, so it's interesting because, like I said, that oriental, milky, jelly-like feel, um that is slightly sweetened, dries, and it becomes a drier oriental, ambery-like feel into the dry down. Um, and there is this note of gum, uh, they call gum rock rose, which is a different way of saying labdanum. I actually don't know what the exact difference is when sometimes it says labdanum, sometimes it says gum rock rose. Uh, I think it's just kind of the different parts of the plant that are being used, but, um, uh, whether it's like the cystus or the labdanum, but it, it, it turns into a drier ambery with sandalwood dried out. And that's, that's the important part is there's a beautiful sandalwood note in here. And I think it's probably a synthetic sandalwood, but for a synthetic sandalwood, it's beautiful. You know, it's smooth. It works with the milkiness in that silk vine. It's like some of the notes kind of play off of each other. The silk, the milkiness of the silk vine bridges into the base of the milky sandalwood. Um, and, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really, if you focus on, if you're a fan of Amouage's past and future, what have become before this and after this, you'll find little notes in here that I think will just remind you. It's almost like I can, I can see Christopher Chong's vision, like kind of coming into like forming, you know, he talks about memories and stuff like that. But when I wear these old Amouage's, it's like, I can almost feel Christopher Chong's vision kind of coming uh, just this nebula of an idea kind of forming because there's a couple notes in here and I know I said that this is a very modern executed niche fragrance but um, there's some notes in here like the Sichuan pepper for example if there actually is Sichuan pepper in here I wouldn't be surprised if they amped that note up and then created Journeyman which I reviewed on the channel if you want to check out the full review but um, I wouldn't be surprised if that Sichuan pepper note in here led to the Journeyman that we know today. Um, and the bay leaf or the laurel, that's a note that has come up over and over again in the library collection. And that's a note that is very popularly used in Jubilation 25 for men, which I will review and I'll do the, um, you know, Jubilation 40 comparison video or whatever. I'm still, still waiting on, on that to happen. Um, but this is one I really wanted to get to because I feel like everyone is, going for the newer Amouages now. They're excited about Jubilation 40 and stuff like that. But stuff like this, which I think is um, just as worthy as, of praise as Jubilation 25 for men, uh, you know, I don't think this is, um, I don't think this deserves to be relegated to the back pages of the internet where you have to go to discounters and stuff like that. The good news is you can just search Opus 6 on any, uh, search engine, go to Google and search it. You'll see all of these fragrance um, discounters selling Opus 6 still right now. You know, there's um, uh, the perf perfume online. I've never used them before, but $137 for 100 mil of this juice. That's an absolute steal. Um, for It is a tester. If you want full presentation, it's 225 But the library collection bottles on Amouage's website sell for 360 uh, And so... You know, the fact that maybe this is getting relegated to the back pages of the internet 
you can pick this up at a pretty fair and decent price to me. Um, I like that it pays homage to past and future sort of amouages. Um, and I, my guess is if you kind of put this under someone's nose who has never smelled oud, and you said, hey, this is kind of what this Mid-Eastern Oriental style fragrance is all about, they would probably smell this and you'd probably get a lot of head nods and, hmm, this is interesting, you know? That's my guess, is you'd probably get a lot of people who this appealed to in the West. Even if you told them it's oud, or an oud-like fragrance, um, I think they would enjoy it, you know? I, I think this was kind of created with those kind of people in mind, you know? Uh, that's that's kind of my take on it. And I think that even though Alberto Morias in that interview I saw said he wanted to lean into the oud feel, right? Creating that oud without using oud. I think that Pierre Negrin and Alberto Morias ended up leaning into the frankincense note even more. Because I think the frankincense note is when 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 you think of Amouage... Most people don't think of oud. Obviously, there is oud in things like interlude and stuff like that, which is still on the to review list. But, um, you know, it, it's there. It's in Jubilation 25. There is oud notes in Epic and stuff like that. But it's the incense note that Amouage is really known for. And this really leans into that incense note more than I think it is given credit for. Yes, it's ambery. Um, but that you know, ambery, resinous, sticky sort of side of things, the frankincense leans into that beautifully. And it, it just works. It works on my skin. It pops. It really does pop. Um, and I will say there is, even though it's not listed, there's a little bit of this strange floral thing that kind of comes and goes. Maybe there is a floral aspect to the silk vine note that I don't know about, but there's no florals listed. There's, um, there is Cipriol listed. And the Cipriol works with the patchouli to give it that oud-like effect. Cipriol can be very earthy and sometimes smoky. And there's a resinous feel to this. And I think that resinous feel comes from some of those synthetics in the base, is my guess. Um, you know, but where the florals are coming from, this weird touch of rose and touch of jasmine that kind of comes and goes, I have no clue. No clue at all. Um, it doesn't necessarily stand out. I think it just adds contrast, but it's there. You know, if you really pay close attention, you'll get a little bit of a floral feel here and there. And so finally, the synthetics in the base. Uh, it's interesting because the two synthetics that are used in the base, one is ambranum, which is a niche ingredient that is supposed to be an amber type ingredient. And if you go to Parfumo and you click on ambranum, You'll notice there's only, a, again, a handful of fragrances that have used this note. One is a, a, Zen, a Zenya fragrance called Ascenza Amber Gold. I've never smelled many of those uh, Zenyas. And there's a Shirk fragrance from 2019 called Tars Gentleman Man, no clue. And a Potentia fragrance from 18 called Cognitos Indigo Flame, no clue again. So um, it's not a heavily used ingredient. Opus 6, according to Parfumo, was the first on this list that actually did use this specific ambranum ingredient. Um, and so I think it is maybe from labdanum. You could bunch it with the labdanums and the ambers and stuff like that. But I don't really know. I couldn't tell you exactly what makes it different. But there is something unique about the ambery dry down, you know. There's something that really feels like it's kind of energetic, you know, like static in the background. Um, or like an EKG machine kind of going up and down. There, There is something about this that, even though the pepperiness in the top, which I described as energetic, fades, there's something about even the base materials that it just feels like it keeps it going. Even though there's no pepperiness per se, there, the energetic feel of the fragrance keeps going, if that makes sense. Um, the other one is an ingredient called Z11, and Z11 is another Fermanish material. It's supposed to be a woody fragrance ingredient. And the way I've heard it described is it's supposed to be almost like a wood encased in metal. Okay, very strange. Um, I don't know, like an iron cannonball with wood on the inside. I don't know how you would describe that. But um, Z11 is another one that if you actually click on the damn thing, it's only like five fragrances in the whole Parfumo database that have used them. Many of them get almost no talk, 
But one of them, excuse me, one of them, I think I've reviewed on the channel. Uh, I have to go check my notes, but there's a Meisen Sur fragrance called Original Oud that um, Alberto Morias' actual brand. So this is where the Alberto Morias connection comes back in. Meisen Sur is his brand. Uh, actually, you know what? I just remembered. I did not review Original Oud. I reviewed a fragrance called Perfect Oud on the on the channel. This is Original Oud that uses this Ambernum note. Um, but uh, he obviously, or sorry, Z11 note, but he obviously um, used what he learned in creating Opus 6 and added it to his Meisenser portfolio, if you will. So there are some others, 24 Rue de l'Université by... Uh, YSL, which is that neat, their high-end niche hand, the Le Vestiaire line, which I've never, I haven't really reviewed much of those on the channel. There's just so much. It's impossible to review them all. So I just like kind of focusing on, um, you know, these, these type of series where I can focus on maybe a brand or a fragrance and then get going. That's why I've reviewed so many Rojas, because I'm just on this roll of reviewing the Rojas. Um, and we're almost done, by the way. There's only a handful more I have, and then we'll have talked about all the ones I have access to on the channel. Uh, but Amouage is another house that I really enjoy kind of reviewing. And one thing I should mention in closing is that if you came to me and said, Ramsey, you know, I know amber woods get a lot of bad press. A lot of these synthetic materials get shit all over on the internet and stuff like that. And some of them are very bad and some of them are badly used in my opinion, right? But if you said, hey, I want an example of a fragrance that uses synthetics well, this would be my, this would be my example. Opus 6 is a perfect example of two master perfumers kind of coming together to create something special with synthetics, with sort of, um, you know, the, the quote-unquote dreaded amber. I guess you would consider uh, Ambranum and uh, Z11 and stuff like that as amber woods. Um, the other thing is pay attention for that sandalwood dry down. It's beautiful here. The sandalwood here does not get enough love, in my opinion. I really like the sandalwood dry down. Um, the Cipriol adds that earthiness to it. The Silk Vine note adds that strange, unique, exotic note to it. So it's, this is definitely one of my, uh, favorites from the Opus line. Um, uh, very excited to have a full bottle. For the longest time, I was living off of decants, and I've had multiple decants of this. I've had actual decants from friends, and I've had brand, um, you know, labeled decants. I've had three or four brand, you know, two mil amouage samples of this as well. Uh, or maybe it was like six. I can't remember how many, but I had a bunch of them. And so I went through most of those and ended up getting a bottle. So you can see, even though there's not a lot taken out of this bottle, I've been wearing Opus 6 for a long time. So um, I'm definitely a fan. Uh, check it out. If you've never tried it, I would say now is the time to strike while the iron's hot. If Amouage is actually pushing this stuff off the website and pushing it to discounters or whatever, this may be your chance to get one of these vintage bottles uh, at a at a very fair and reasonable price. So that's my take on Opus 6. If you have experience with it, do let me know. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments as always. Thanks for watching. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.